So, hello everybody, and David Diana once again from from Kaunas. So, on this uh, this lovely snowy day again, we haven't actually got any snow, but there's plenty on the ground. I thought I'd tell you the story of kind of an important war hero, World War II war hero, um, and Kaunas. And we're going to start in Kaunas city centre, where there is a plaque to this man. Now, I don't know if you can see up here. But here we are. Here's the first plaque to Mr. Chune Sugihara, who was a Japanese diplomat who was posted to to Kaunas, kind of at the this was the outbreak of World War II. So we'll start off in Kaunas City Centre. I'm going to take you all the way up to where where he lived in his time in in Kaunas. And also tell you the story of this amazing hero of World War II. So I hope you enjoy it. So Sugihara was a Japanese diplomat who was posted to Kaunas basically because of he, uh, he was fluent in Russian, so that would obviously help. And at the time, Kaunas was actually the capital of Lithuania in 1939. It wasn't Vilnius. So this was a perfect spot basically to provide intel on the German and Soviet kind of movements and forces and whatever was going on in the region uh, because World War II had kind of, I suppose the Nazis had just invaded Poland but the rest of what was to happen had not really begun. So June 1940 is when our story really begins to start. I hope you can hear me, these birds are making a heck of a lot of noise. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so in June 1940, the Soviet Union occupied Lithuania. And before this, there was loads of Polish Jews who'd actually fled to Lithuania. Um, Lithuania had lo allowed loads of refugees to enter who were fleeing, I suppose, Nazi persecution in their, you know, in Poland. And Basically, Sugihara was kind of met with thousands of these refugees who, who needed a visa basically to escape from this situation in, in Europe that was, was beginning to start. Faced with this situation, Sugihara obviously spoke to his, his superiors back in Japan. What do I do? You know, you've got all these refugees coming asking for visas how to treat them and well the the Japanese government basically said that not to issue visas to anyone without the, the necessary proper papers um, which basically meant that literally none of these refugees would have been allowed to have a visa however this didn't stop Sugihara he decided to basically disobey what he was told by, by his superiors in Japan and he started issuing, issuing visas to these, these people to allow them to, to travel to, to Japan and then onwards to final destination. And he would issue something like up to 300 visas a day, working for 18 hour days. It's also important to note his wife in this situation, who would apparently massage his hands just so that he could, you know, he, he wouldn't be in so much pain writing out all these visas for all these people. So, with this all in mind, Sugihara would have faced like a big dilemma, basically. He had, obviously, this one side of the Japanese government telling him not to look after these people, not to give them visas. But he also had the other side of this, like, samurai sort of code of ethics and way of doing things and doing the right thing. So it would have been a really difficult situation for him to, to have been in and knowing that he could have helped his people. But the government was telling him otherwise, basically, and not to help them. So here we are, and I suppose to bring a close to this video, we find ourselves outside the house where Sugihara would have lived. Now, unfortunately, we can't go in at the moment, as you might be able to read on the sign there state and forced quarantine it's closed until apparently the first of march but here you go here's the some japanese writing 
So, if you ever do find yourselves in Kaunas, I, I recommend coming here. Well, what does it say up there? Uh, so in 1939, 1940, the building housed the Consulate of Japan, Consul Chuni Sugihara, a saviour of Jews, held his office here. So, basically, as a result of Sugihara's actions in giving out these visas, it's estimated he saved about 6,000 Jewish lives uh, in, in World War II. Um, and kind of when asked why he did this, Sugihara basically said he had you know, two main reasons. First of all, they were human beings in need of help and he could help them. The second reason was if he didn't help them, basically, well, he was obviously going to disobey the state, first of all, like by doing this, but if he didn't help them and he didn't disobey the state, he would be disobeying God, which as an actual, as a Christian, this was a, this was a big deal to him. And I suppose we have to really say thank you to Shunei Sugihara because he was actually kept in service during World War II, um, kind of even after these things had happened because of with his skills as in Russian and I suppose knowledge of the area. But after that, he was he was shunned by the Japanese government for what he'd done. He was a very humble man. He never really spoke much about it. Even his family didn't really know anything that had happened um, until you know many years later when he was he was honoured by both the international Jewish community and and Japan for his, his bravery and his actions. And, you know, even nowadays, from what I've read, there's something like 100,000 people, really, like descendants of these refugees that Sugihara saved, that essentially, in a way, kind of, you know, owe their lives to this brave man for helping their ancestors, uh, their potentially grandparents, even parents, you know, to escape from this horrible situation that we found in Europe at the time. So, thank you, Johnny Sugihara, for your actions. <laughs> <laughs>